as a hoarder myself of collectible items, you know, Rudy's video reveals more heavy bags where he's showing, it's a, it's a less than a minute video. He's showing a room, I assume it's maybe his basement. Um, it doesn't look like it's storage because storage would be more professionally set up. Or, you know, I have storage myself. It doesn't look like a storage facility. And he's got all, he's got a million dollars in Weiss product. Uh, it is a basement and he lives in Florida. I live in Texas. We both flood a lot. A lot of hurricane season is upon us. And uh, yeah, I mean, I look at that and I, as a hoarder myself, I kind of feel a little embarrassed because I look at uh, my upstairs closets and my rooms, they're filled to the brim with exactly what he has. Not as much, of course. And obviously I collect anime figures as well. So I have a whole room, you know, like this home was owned before I owned it. Uh, it was owned by two lawyers and they had three sons. One son's bedroom, I turned it into an anime storage room for all my anime figures. Uh, my my XMs, my Prime Ones, you know, these are huge. It's a She-Hulk box. I don't know why it's, it's so huge, but it's gigantic. And it's also heavy. The box itself is heavy and the figure's like, it's got a tank in it. It's like, uh, literally a tank. And then I transformed my other room, which I now I'm putting storage and stuff. It used to be like an exercise room but it now has become a room for my uh, sealed boxes and my Pokemon and my ETBs. In fact, I'm getting another few thousand dollars of ETB tomorrow from a guy who's driving in and he's selling me ETBs for $24 a box, which sounds really good, but it is a lot of Fusion Strike, mostly Fusion Strike, uh, some Darkness Ablaze, and it's not like a great, great deal. It's a good deal, but it's not a great, great deal. I kind of just want shining fit. I kind of want the boxes, honestly, to put it behind me in the background. I have another person coming in tomorrow to do my anime, to sell me some anime figures that we're trying to figure out. A local person that I bought, probably 50% of my anime collection comes from her. She's also a massive collector. And she, unlike me, like, you know, she knows how to sell and exchange figures and trade and do all that stuff. So it's time, it's that season where she has these shipments come in from Japan and now she wants to offload stuff to me, but it's a good price, you know, it's always a good experience. I always have a good time uh, talking to her about collections and stuff. So the other thing coming tomorrow is my dog groomer. My dog actually ate a whole fire emblem box. It was not salvageable, so I just threw it out. I have lost a lot of Fire Emblem Cypher boxes recently. The FedEx person, I'm pretty sure is stealing my boxes. Maybe he is a Fire Emblem Cypher. Maybe he'll sell it back to me. I don't know. Uh, a lot of things are changing, but the one thing that is not is if you're a hoarder right now, I mean, what? So if you're a collector versus a hoarder, I think a hoarder is just a more extreme collector and it is a good time to collect because you can buy stuff you know that you've never seen before like inuyasha cards i have not bought a single inuyasha card in probably over 10 years and now i bought the biggest collection that's ever existed i think i've proven that i mean i have the most everything minus autograph cards because again you know that's one of those things that you either went to events and got them or you didn't so it's impossible you know so back to kind of uh, the hoarding. Yeah, this is becoming a problem because even though I live in a huge home, my my bulk is in my garage and my storage. And I transform one room into an anime room. So actually I have two media rooms upstairs. One room is an anime, it's, it's a, a giant table. I can actually film from that room, but it's very open spacey upstairs. So that's one of the rooms I could have filmed from in Maybe I will in a later time. The live stream issue. And I have another room. It has all my Legos and board games and my dog has chewed up. Uh, my Shiba Unu is a big fan of board games, apparently. Probably done over 1,000, 2,000. Who, who really knows? Some of these board games are exceedingly rare from the 1970s, 1960s. They're not sealed, of course, but I mean, they still have all the parts and stuff. 
I, I got into board games and I started hoarding. Now, board games, I mean, is, is just like, that's even worse than a booster box of Magic because they come in all of these different sizes and stuff and they don't really fit symmetrically together. And you can't really stack them together because one will be made from cheaper material. But anyway, yeah, my Shibu Unu definitely destroyed probably over, you know, 50 board games. And you might be like, how did you let that happen? Well, I mean, so I had the board games like outside and stuff. My like my dog who destroyed my Fire Emblem Bentley. Well, not my even not even my CBU Union, My Australian Merle today destroyed a box of Fire Emblem. He just rips it and tears it, and, and then he's a big fan of just destroying stuff. I like. <laughs> it's it's a problem of having dogs, right? I mean, um, they're dogs. Now, could I get training for them? Yes, I've trained them not to go upstairs. That's probably the best training I can get. My cat destroyed my anime figures. I mean, when you have free dogs and a cat, it's just brutal to any collector. It is very brutal, uh, especially if you're a hoarder like myself. So I saw that video and it really just, you know, I know how difficult that is because let's say Alpha Investment wants to move his wife's collection slightly over, which happens a lot because, oh, hey, you know, I got a new collection of cards by Vanguard or MetaZoo. Now I want to move everything slightly over. I want to move the stuff that I don't want to look at slightly away. Well, with a million dollars of product, that could take a whole day, right? It, I had $50,000 of Magic product and that took a whole blanking day. That took multiple days to move upstairs and you know, get it in the right place and the shelving and get it all correct. I think a lot of us would die as hoarders. Now I'm thinking about it, you know, you read in the news, right, all of these like perpetual hoarders that die when stuff falls. Yeah, I mean, if that stack of Weiss cards fell on somebody, it could kill somebody and they would be trapped underneath a pile of cardboard. I mean, I mean, you know, you always hear about these stories of old ladies dying under newspapers, right? But like newspapers are made from the same thing as cardboard, right? So, I mean, and cardboard is heavier and more dense. I mean, these mother efforts are so dense, man. I mean, it's just like, oh my God. I think about having to move this. I move. I literally moved it from that room to my upstairs streaming room. And so much shit happened. You know, my cat wanted to eat some of it. My cat is the only pet that goes upstairs. So that's the only pet I need to worry about. But when it's like cellar flames, he likes to chase, you know, he likes to scratch things randomly. Uh, it is a little worrisome when you have maybe a two thousand dollar box, and now, now you know what your cat is. You got to put it in the back of the wall. It's fascinating as hell, man. I mean, hoarding is definitely not the way to go. Let me tell you that as a as a hoarder myself, uh, who probably has hoarded over half a million dollars in collectible items, be it anime figures, card games, obviously other camera equipment, lenses. I mean, I, I got, when I got into photography, I think we did one job for a graduation party and we did like one wedding, but I spent like $25,000 on photography equipment. And I, and we actually even had a full-time employee at one time and then things were going really well. Things were going really well. I mean, I, I don't know. It just then like, I was like, wow, you so, you just stand here for like eight bloody hours. Like it's insane. Nah, man, I don't wanna do this anymore. I make more money, you know, as a lawyer for two hours than I do at this whole wedding. No, not that the wedding money was bad. The wedding money was good, but my gosh, you're like, I mean, it is just physically, t your back feels like it's gonna break because you stand for eight, 12, 14 hours. I can sit in my gaming chair for that long and do like Google ads, but no, you're, you're standing, carrying camera equipment, doing films. It, it's just weird, it is really weird. I'm glad that I had the opportunity, but I don't think I have what it takes to be a photographer or videographer. I need to hire one of these people. I've always needed to hire one of these people, but you know, that was the uh, like, kind of like, oh, I can't do this myself moment. Hi <laughs> guys.